squat, 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 squat. I remember this try very fondly. Partly because it kicked off with what turned out to be one of the best tests of recent years, partly because it's as audacious an intercept as you'll ever see, but mostly because it marked the last time I got to watch Israel Folau, the rugby player, rather than being distracted by Israel Folau, the nauseating homophobic twat bag. At the time, it just seemed like a great read, but now it seems like an act of luck. Izzy just happening to catch the ball as he remembered the referee was gay and sprinted up field as far away as possible. Hello, I'm breaking the channel's usual format because I want to try and get this video up as quickly as possible and to try and cover the Israel Flower situation that's currently unfolding in and across rugby over the last week or so. Um, I recognise that I kind of have a reputation regarding what I think of Falau, and as the word twat bag may have suggested earlier in the video already, that opinion hasn't changed. However, I am going to try to be as fair as possible over the course of this video and as thorough and as opaque and clear as I can be when covering all sides of the story. So, I want to begin by bringing anyone who isn't up to speed up to speed. For anyone who needs to bring him to speed, Israel Folau is amongst the most talented rugby players in the world. Every game he plays, showing more aerial skill than Tom Cruise with a yo-yo. A player who skims across grass like he apparently does a contract. He was the guy who was great to watch. The top try scorer, the kind of player kids hung posters of on walls. For all the technical brilliance of David Pocock, who I hold is still the best player in the world, Israel Folau was the star of Australian rugby. And then, in September 2017, he sent this tweet. Australia at the time was holding a same-sex marriage referendum. The motion passed, which is certainly something Falau's never done, and yet it opened this huge can of worms, as Falau suggested in this tweet that he loves everybody, including members of the LGBT community. In fact, Falau loved them so much that he wanted to deny them what is classified under Article 12 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights as a human right, the right to marry. He wanted them not to have human rights. That's how much he loved them. That's where the issues began. By suggesting that homosexuals are not entitled to marriage, Falau said he believed they weren't entitled to the same rights as everyone else, suggesting that they deserve to be considered subhuman. From there, it just got worse. The guy became obsessed. Over the 20 months since the initial shitstorm, Falau proceeded to send countless tweets using his religion as a screen for his bigotry. Honestly, I missed a lot of it because the guys blocked me on just about every social media platform out there. But to give you the gist, it was basically stuff about how all gays are going to hell repeatedly. Um, and then the usual bullshit about how people shouldn't be gay because it wasn't Adam and Steve, and people shouldn't be bi because it wasn't Adam, Ashley and Cooper. And then a few days ago, in the shit-stained afterglow of calling all trans and non-binary people evil, Falau decided he hadn't had enough of being called a cunt for one week and posted this. A graphic he apparently knocked up himself. A list of people who would commit the biggest sins. I think you see people heading straight to hell. On that list are the likes of liars, drinkers, unlucky curtly, fornicators, thievery, thievery, thieves, uh, apparently, not people who write lists in Comic Sans, but of course, you guessed it, also on that list was homosexuality. For now suggesting that they're all sins on par with each other, that being gay is the same as lying or robbery. And then, the following day, something miraculous happened. Rugby Australia made the decision to terminate Falau's contract. Since then, Australia coach Michael Check has come in and said that he'd never pick Falau again, and Falau's club and country captain, Michael Hooper, has come in and said that he would find it hard to share a pitch with Falau again. Incidentally, Imagine how bad a guy you've got to be in order for Michael Bloody Hooper not to like you. He seems like the kind of guy who just turns up your house with four beers because you posted something slightly sad on Facebook. On top of this, I made a cake to celebrate. Um, you can see the full thing here, or you can see what's left of it. Here. It's pretty good. Then, somewhat inevitably, a debate sprang up. England's believe in a polar wading, which is always fun for the scales. Whilst he didn't say explicitly, he came so close to agreeing with Falau's sentiment that he might as well have just snapped a RuPaul boxer over his knee before he ran off to be booed in Bristol. Since then, more and more players have 
got involved, the whole situation becoming uglier and uglier with each day. However, regardless of where you stand and what you said, there's actually no argument over the fact that Rugby Australia were well within their rights to do what they did. Last year, Israel Folau signed a new contract with Australia and the Waratahs, his club, which made him, reportedly, the highest paid player in the world. Which was probably something that absolutely disgusted Folau, and he very much argued against because he's so against greed and gluttony. In that contract were terms about what Folau could and could not say on social media. He had to uphold the values of Australian rugby, which he clearly broke the moment he condemned alcoholism. Falau signed that deal despite it containing terms he obviously didn't agree with and he never intended to uphold. A lie that I'm sure was in no way motivated by the amount of money being offered to him. So when Falau decided to ignore that clause in his contract and then ignore the ARU when they tried to contact him over the matter, they took action. Simply put, Falau broke the terms of his contract and his employer terminated it as such. It's literally the reason people sign contracts. That isn't controversial. Rugby Australia had every right to fire him. However, there were a number of things about the situation that have been controversial. So I'm going to move on to those now. First and perhaps foremost is the old gammon classic, freedom of speech. People spout the phrase freedom of speech constantly and yet constantly miss the point. Nobody has denied Israel Folau the freedom of speech. He's had a platform to express how he feels, he's used it, and people have listened. What people frequently get wrong, however, is that freedom of speech is not the same as freedom from consequences, and nor is it the same from freedom from judgement. Folau, as with anyone else, is free to say whatever he likes, so long as he's willing to accept that there will most likely be a follow-up to it. The speech he freely spoke broke a contract he had signed. Now it's been terminated. That's consequence. He's well within his rights to say, all gay people will go to hell. And I am well within my rights to respond by calling him a flagrantly putrid collection of cuntish jellyfish stood on each of his shoulders doing Muppet Man. That's judgement. Neither of those things in any way impede Falau's freedom of speech. Now, I've been very careful over the course of this video so far not to say the word opinion, because what Falau has been so vivaciously spewing is not an opinion. It's hate speech. Hate speech is defined as any speech or writing, because it's hard to really nail bigotry and interpretive dance, that expresses prejudice towards any particular group. And by saying that all of a particular group deserve to go to hell, Falau is absolutely nailing that definition. Let's just take a moment to highlight what Falau wants for all LGBT individuals, the ones he claims to love so much. We're talking about hell. Literal hell. Being gay is not a choice someone can make. It's a circumstance of birth, no different to race or nationality. And unlike nationality, you can't change that by living in Ireland for three years. He believes that anyone born gay, bi, trans, queer of any kind, deserves to spend eternity in a place of eternal torment, of endless suffering, of being tortured in the worst ways known for a human. We're talking burning alive, playing on the wing in lower league rugby, supporting the dragons. For me, that would probably be being stuck watching an eternal loop of top drunkard fornicator Curtly Beals fevering against Wales in 2012 while stubbing my toe every 20 seconds. It doesn't matter if you believe in hell or not. He does. Falau believes this is a real place, and that's how every gay person worldwide deserves to spend forever. Burning eternally in the North Stand of Rodney Parade. Nobody looks at a racist and thinks, hmm, I respectfully disagree. Somebody discriminating, as Falau has, on the basis of sexual orientation is no different. Discrimination is not an opinion. Falau did not express an opinion. He expressed hate, even if he didn't mean it to be construed as such. Even if he holds no ill feeling towards any individual LGBT person, which I believe may well be the case, he still, in his tweets, his Instagram posts, his sound bites and interviews, come out and condemned their whole group as natural born sinners who deserve fewer rights than everybody else for doing nothing but existing. And this leads me on to a point made by Northampton's own gangly-armed human spanner, Courtney Laws, in this 
Instagram comment. After describing Izzy's outburst as an opinion, he then asks this question. If you don't believe in the same thing as them, the Falao and the Napola, then what do these statements matter to you? Can we not disagree with someone without calling them a bigot or a homophobe or every other name under the sun? Firstly, I think it's entirely fair to call someone a bigot or a homophobe if they're being bigoted or homophobic. However, the real reason I want to pick up on this point is because he posed a question. And I'm going to answer it. Now, I recognise I'm a man less than half his size and nowhere near the ball, so I'm in immediate danger of being smashed by him. But I'm still going to answer his question. And I want to answer it like this. Because it matters. Now, my favourite response by any current player was that of Japan captain Michael Leach, because he called Falao out for being exactly what he is. A bully. Israel Falao, whether he likes it or not, is a role model. He's a hero to young Australian rugby fans, of which there surely must be a handful. He has a platform as his country's most flash player in a roughly global sport, and he's using that to bully, that's to target, belittle, to put down members of an already often marginalised group. In the last two years, there will have been young Wallabies fans who hit an age at which they're beginning to ask questions of themselves, questions far bigger than those that Courtney Laws could ever hope to pose, of who they are, how they feel, and how they're going to come to identify for the rest of their lives. And then, just as they're at this stage, here's the hero coming in and saying that if they do think the way they think they're thinking, and they feel the way they think they're feeling, then they're subhuman, and they deserve to go to hell. This is not okay. This is not acceptable, palatable, anything other than despicable. And I want to use my platform, the one I've built up doing this channel, which is nowhere near as big as Falao's, to make that as clear as I possibly can. Homosexuality is normal and valid, and something to be celebrated. The reason I put anti-Israel Falao jokes in basically every video I make is because I wanted to really sink in that what Falao has done and continues to do, and he's no doubt going to continue to do, he's still going to have an Instagram page, if he's going to have wallaby caps, is not okay. I grew up in a world in which being gay meant you got mocked. For it. You were bullied, marginalised, for something that was natural, human, if you're so inclined, part of God's plan. However, I want the next generation to grow up in a world in which being homophobic is something you get mocked for, bullied, marginalised, because being homophobic is a choice. You've chosen to preach hate over accepting love. I've had some of my favourite players praise my videos, I've been mentioned in major papers, I've blah 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 blah, but genuinely the proudest I've been of what I've managed with this channel was when a group of young rugby fans recognised me at rugby club, um, kids of no older than 11 or 12, and one of them told me that they really loved these rough allow jokes, and I realised that they were growing up in that kind of world, that even though I'd been a small influence, I was one part of them seeing that homophobia was being punished, was not being accepted. And I felt like I might have done something worthwhile amongst 40 videos of making puns on the word ruck. But even more than that, I want the generation after that to grow up in a world in which they don't even need to think about it. In which homophobia is no longer a going concern. I recognise I don't have a big enough platform to make that kind of change. But we live in a world in which LGBT teenagers are more than three times as likely to attempt suicide, in which stigma is still rampant. And in a world like that, we all need to do what we can. We don't know the damage that someone like Falau saying what they said might have done to someone. And every single voice that speaks out against him helps soften that damage just a little bit. Knowing that the world thinks that Falau's wrong could help people who might be struggling feel like they're not. That, Courtney Laws, is why I care. I care because I want to live in a better world. And now I will address the final point often brought up in defence of Falau, his religion. I should preface this by saying that I myself am not especially religious, 
although I was brought up by an RE teacher from mother who was wonderful and taught me as widely as possible. So, Flau will present what he's saying as a Craig Joubert style letter of the law interpretation of the Bible, which was a text written thousands of years ago to be interpreted in relation to the culture of the time, which was very different, has then been translated through several languages to get the form that is so often studied word for word in English. As such, I've always seen and always been taught that the Bible is more a message than a set of guidelines. It's an idea rather than a suggestion. And as such, I feel and I recognise it is not my place to necessarily say this, but in many ways, Israel Folau, in the way he's been using his religion, has missed the point in Christianity. If you're to read between the lines, the entire moral of the Bible, the entire purpose of all the parables, is to love and accept people rather than blindly following rules. The faith of Christianity isn't about the words on the page, it's about the core values you take from them and how you live your life. Instead of living the way the book suggests that God would want, Falau has been treating the Bible as a checklist, a set of rules to get him into heaven. The Pope is no less devout a Christian than Falau, yet he's declared the church in favour of same-sex marriage. Falau keeps claiming that he loves everyone, and yet he outright refuses to accept them. And yet, and yet, even if we are to obliterate what I just said and go with his strict interpretation as correct, Falau hasn't actually followed it. If he had, he wouldn't have tattoos because the Bible forbids that. He'd never have got this haircut because the Bible kind of forbids that. And he'd never have pulled on an Australian jersey because the Bible, pretty strict on wearing clothing made of multiple materials. Though admittedly, that sin won't be one he's committing for much longer. Incidentally, and I've wanted to bring this up for some time, Israel Falau has the word Falau tattooed across his chest, which seems to suggest one of two things. Either he's an incredibly prideful fella, or he's so stupid that his mum had to sew his name onto his own flesh for fear he'd end up in lost property. And even to get back to the point, Falau has then since palmed all criticism of what he said off on God, saying that getting sacked means that rugby is no longer part of God's plan for him. And yet, for whatever reason, he can't accept that being gay might be part of God's plan for somebody else. There's this enormous hypocrisy about everything he says. Falau has used his Christian beliefs as a shield for, and I'm going to say it, sorry Courtney Laws, bigotry and homophobia, and then used them again to expunge responsibility for his actions. Falau has not been punished for his religious beliefs. You and Murray refused to play on Saturdays if ever a fixture fell on one. And this had an exponentially greater impact on his rugby career, and yet there was never any threat of kicking him out of the sport. Falau has not been punished for believing. He's been punished for bullying and belittling, for being the kind of person we want nowhere near a sport that gets into such sinful 24-hour circle jerks over rugby values and the spirit of the game constantly. That's why Rugby Australia taking action, showing that no player is too talented to avoid consequence, to, should be celebrated. Karl Popper wrote in 1945 that if a society is to be truly tolerant, it has to be intolerant of intolerance. And everybody in rugby needs to show that. We can't allow people like Falau to continue to make a game already so ugly on the outside seem ugly on the inside as well. We have to be better than this. We can't have any ambiguity. Rugby Australia sent a message that was the clearest and the loudest they possibly could by ending Falau's contract. And I want to try to do the same thing. So, what I want to say is homophobia is not a part of Christianity. Freedom of speech is not freedom from consequence. Hate speech is not an opinion. Hate speech is not okay. Hate speech is not going to be tolerated in rugby or in any other walk of life. Israel Falau is not a martyr. He's just a twat who threw away a talent that so many others dream of. 
And most importantly, love is love. And love will always win in the end. Thank you. Hello, I'm going to do this very quickly because you've seen enough of my face over the last t t 20 minutes. Um, so thank you very much for watching that. I recognise that was a rugby video with very little rugby in it. So it's appreciated that you sat through it all the way to the end. Thank you. I uh, hope that's covered the Israel Falao situation comprehensively. And I don't need to go back to this. Um, in terms of rugby content, I'm going to go back to doing the usual format with actual rugby in it and actual analysis and so on. Um, I've got a video on Ireland Six Nations that I have been working on. I can't put on hold or to do this. I'll be going back to that right away. And that should be up in the next week or so. Until then, thank you for being nice and watching this and being lovely. Thank you to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. And thank you to uh, Rugby Australia for firing Israel Falau.